All right, folks, I'm joined right now one of the greatest pro wrestlers of all time, the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. Ted, such an honor to have you today here at Super Mega Fest in Framingham, Massachusetts. Um, incredible career that you've had. I want to first ask you, I mean, watching this stuff from the UWF, you were an incredible babyface, probably one of the top babyfaces of the UWF. How was the transition from going a beloved babyface to one of the most top heels in WWE at the time and becoming the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase? Well, uh, I started out in the business as most guys do as a baby face and I was a baby face for a very long time in what was then called Mid-South Wrestling for Bill Watts and uh, it was uh, when about the time the WWF was first starting to move out which was what like 83, 84 uh, that's when I decided to turn heel and I actually turned heel in the Mid-South against Junkyard Dog who was actually my best friend. <laughs> uh, but uh, Bill Watts was the first wrestling promoter to ever feature as his top star a black man yeah. and in the South. And so Junkyard Dog was over huge. And, and so uh, Ernie Ladd was the, the, was, was the booker. And he told me, he said, Ted, he says, you're the one traveling out a little bit. He says, be looking around. We need a, we need a heel. And so uh, I got to thinking about that. And so I went and knocked on his door, and I said, Ernie, I said, I found your heel. He said, who? He said, you're looking at him. And he, he took two steps back, and he went, oh, my gosh, that is a great idea. And so I turned heel with the Junkyard Dog. And so I had been a heel, and what was, was funny was, like, I'd been a heel, and I was a heel for uh, a good long while, a couple of years. And then all of a sudden, uh, we do this we do this other angle where I switch back and I become partners with uh, uh, Steve. Steve Dr. Death Williams. Yeah, Steve Dr. Yeah. Death Williams. Yeah. And so right before I end up going to the WWF, I'm, I'm a baby face again. <laughs> so, uh, but no, I, I think the reason that Vince chose me to be this character, the Million Dollar Man, is that he had seen me just be a heel. And uh, I was the, you know, there's, there's two kinds of heels. There's the tough guy heel, like The Rock, like Steve Austin. The tough, guy, the, the tough guy heel is always eventually going to be a good guy because people like tough guys. But the, the kind of heel that you never get tired of seeing him get his butt kicked is what I call the... Uh, the bully heel. He talks real big, but when you confront him, he's a coward. And he backs off. He doesn't want to really, you know. And so you never get tired of seeing that guy get his butt kicked. Well, that's the kind of heel the Million Dollar Man was. I, talk, I bullied people with my wealth. Well, Vince saw all that in this in, in me, and that's how, why he chose me to be the, the character. And so, but all the other stuff that we did, I mean, you know, Vince did everything. I mean, even down to the, the million dollar belt, the belt was actually designed by Terry Betterich, which Betterich Jewelers, uh, the most expensive jewelry store in, in Greenwich, Connecticut. And he designed the belt. The belt's worth in 1988 when they had it made was $40,000. All the stones are cubic zirconium. In today's market, that belt's worth 200 grand. So Vince always did things, you know, up and up. And then he gives me money, and he says, now, we're going to use some of this money to, we're going to market off as marketing. He said, now, if you, if you abuse this, you're going to lose it. But on occasion, like if you're in a restaurant or having a drink, buy a round on the house. A round on the house from the Million Dollar Man. You know, get the tab, pay, slap down the $100 bills, bring us the receipt. And we give you more money. And so I did, I would do that in a restaurant. I would do it in a bar. I would, you know, so you need to talk about social media. Forget that, man. That, that word spread like wildfire. Oh, my gosh, that really, that, you know, he, people started believing I was the character. Uh, and so, and I didn't act like that in public. Uh, I would when I would do a stunt like that. But other than that, you know, I mean, I was the character at work. Uh, but, yeah, it's, you know, being a heel to me was... It was fun because it was being somebody other than who I really was. So, you know, and, and, and I, get, I get it from fans all the time. I love this. They'll come up here and they'll go, 
that Mr. DiBiase, please don't be offended. I hated your guts. And I go, thank you. <laughs> I said, I'd be worried about you if you actually like me. One of the greatest heels of all, the way that you did the money and everything, I mean, you couldn't get a better gimmick than that, especially in the 80s and 90s. Was it based off Vince McMahon? Now, we knew that he gave you extra money to do that. Was the boy? Did you get heat from the boys by having extra money, living the lifestyle? I mean, it must have been tough to be the million. And was it based off Vince McMahon? Did he tell you that's what it was based on? Well, no, no, he didn't tell me that. I mean, uh, and I don't think, you know, ben, you know, I guess a lot of people have this image of Vince being this monger of a guy. I mean, okay, when I left, Vince, you know, he got more he got more involved in his own show. And, and, and more or less, on television, he did become his own character, right? Uh, but is he that way in real life? No. But he does believe. And uh, Bruce Pritchard tells a story about it. He said that they went, they flew somewhere. This was when he was thinking about this character. He said, I'm going to prove something to you. They were sitting in first class when you, when you could still smoke on a plane. And this guy behind him smoking a cigarette, and he turns around and he says, man, would you, could you put your cigarette out of that? That's killing me. He says, I'm sorry. You know, I, said, I paid for first class lace like you do. I'm, I'm sorry. And so he, he says, he said, how about for 50 bucks? He says, nah, okay, 100 bucks. Nah. He finally, I think he offers some three or $400, and the guy goes, okay. I heard that story. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And so he looks at Bruce and goes, you see, everybody's got a price. <laughs> yeah. Very good, by thank the you, way. Thank you. <laughs> Love that uh, voice. What, what is it? Now, you were a former WWE champion, right? Is it in the books that you won it that night with uh, in the main event, no. or is it still no, controversy? It's, no, it's always the controversy. I mean, that's what it was meant to be. Did they give it to Andre? I mean, uh, that's also controversy, well, right? We don't well, know what happened. Well, switch, right? technically, technically, Andre because the, the ref, one referee now, the other referee, technically Andre won. He beat Hogan, technically, because one, two, three, Andre gets his hand raised. And that's the, that was the whole gimmick. It was like, okay, so Andre gives me the belt because I purchased it from him. And so for about a week or two, I think I, I actually went to the towns and went to the ring with the belt. And, of course, they wait to tell us just right, and Jack Tunney makes the announcement. You know, you did not win the title. Therefore, you're not the champion, no matter what Andre says, you know. And so they couldn't give the belt back to Andre. He wouldn't take it because I paid him off. They couldn't give it back to Hogan because technically he lost the belt. So what do we do? We have a tournament to declare a new champion, which was WrestleMania for. How did you like being the manager of the Million Dollar Corporation with uh, your great stable? Then you managed Bam Bam in the main event with LT. and So you had a great run there. You had a great stable. How did you like that experience? Oh, it was great. You know, I, uh, obviously, obviously, I loved being in the ring. I loved being a wrestler more than anything. And I, you know, I, I enjoyed doing the managing gig, uh, but not nearly as much as I enjoyed you know, being in the mix of it. Uh, but, of course, I, due to the neck injury that I had and what have you, you know, that's, it is what it is. Uh, but yeah, I had I had a great time with those guys. Now you just became the WWE 24/7 champion. You won a WWE title this year at the Raw reunion, so you're still winning belts. You're still in the history books. How was it like becoming the 24/7 champion? <laughs> well, I obviously set a, another record. I, I am now the shortest lived 24/7 champion that, that there ever was. I think I had it a whole a whole hour. You know, that was fun though. It was a lot of fun. All right. I want to thank you so much for your time and such an honor. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody has a price for this man right here, the million-dollar man, Ted DiBiase. <laughs>